Hey there. Welcome to another episode of The Small Business Show. I'm here with Dave Hamilton. And I'm Dave Hamilton here with Shannon Jean. Thanks for hey, man. <laughs> joining us today, folks. Yeah, it's, uh, what is it, show 248, I think? It's 248, two? yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I fail at remembering that every single time I have to look at the website to make sure I have the See episode the number. number right. Yeah. Well, you know, it just so happens we're going to have this show is all about failure. Oh, good and, news. Uh, I'm in good yeah, company. It's good. Good. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, uh, you know, all about creating what is called a failure resume. And while that may seem uh, to go against you know, just about everything we preach on this show, we talk about our success list and all this kind of stuff. Um, we're going to talk today about and, and some have some powerful lessons about why it's a good thing for you to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. It's um, it, it, building a failure resume, which is something I only did very, very quickly uh, to prepare for the show. And, and you'll hear during the episode, I actually add something to mine uh, and tell the story of that. Because, you know, it, as you focus on these things, you, well, you'll see Shannon and I are incapable of leaving something <laughs> looking negative. That's, but, that's right. But but that's like that's the point of this, I think, is, you know, like, yeah, I, I looking at my list and being like, oh, holy crap, like, whoa. And I know I'm missing things. Right. But I'm looking at my list and thinking, yeah. well, you know, I survived every one of those things and I I would not have had other successes if I didn't try those things first. It's not that they're necessarily related. It's just that you learn things or you get momentum coming out of failure. When you're in panic mode, man, that is when you can work the best. Sometimes yeah. you don't want to be yeah. like overly panicked. And I That's certainly right. don't mean to minimize if, if someone, you know, it suffers from clinical anxiety or something like that. That's different. Yeah, but, it is different. Yeah. But, but if, you know, if, if you get yourself into a pickle and have to get yourself out of it, you can capitalize on that momentum when the pickle is over. Uh, Indeed. And I certainly Indeed. have. And I think, uh, well, you'll hear us talk about some of that. Yeah. Know, and, and the one real quick, I want to leave you with this, uh, the, the professor from Princeton who started this concept of a, a, a failure resume. The one thing I loved about his story is he said, you know, out, out of everything, uh, the failure resume has gotten more attention than my entire body of a- academic work throughout his entire life. <laughs> and it was, I thought it was great. You know, of course. Uh, yeah. So it's a powerful well, because concept. It humanizes you. Yes. It, yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's good. Right, I'm excited. Let, to, I'm excited to talk about it. Same. Here we go. I, I just come back to it's kind of the opposite. We talk about this success list, right? Yeah, we, we a lot. Well, this is just the opposite. But I'm starting to think that this might be more powerful um, because it just reminds me, oh, I, I can get through this stuff. Because I face it all the time. I'm I'm in a, a kind of a reinvention phase in my life right now, and I've got some businesses doing well, and other ones that are just they just suck, yeah. you know. And yeah. and I was like, gosh, you know, do I have to cut these loose, or what do I do? And and I'm not getting any younger, and I'm thinking, God, you know, can I reinvent myself again, over and over again? Yeah. And and I got. So it's failure time. Is that what this really means, Shannon? We're not good yeah. at talking about failing. I know. I know. I, I, I've been saying this the whole time. I was just talking to uh, my wife, Renee. I said, like, gosh, you know, it's really tough to talk uh, about it and focus for me, focusing on it. Now, I joke around about it, you yeah. know, with people and that kind of thing about, oh, yeah, you know, and, the, and, I, and I always try to maybe play down some of the successes that I've had because I don't want to. I don't know. I just feel like a jerk sometimes. You don't want to be that guy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be that guy. And somebody will bring something up and I'll be like, oh, you know, but that was one success out of 10 failures or whatever. And, and and so, but the reason you, you, those successes work for you and, and for a lot of folks, uh, you know, me included is that we don't obsess about failure, but we don't ignore it either. And I think, I think as we, as, as you know, you built your failure list and we started putting together this agenda for the show and I started building mine, I, I realized we both do the same thing. It's like, okay, yeah, here's this terrible thing that happened. And sometimes it's varying degrees of terrible, right? But you know, terrible thing, but here's what I learned and here's the positive. And there's, it's like, it's almost impossible not to 
for me anyway, and it seems like for you too. <laughs> it is almost impossible to not like spin it. And so we are, yes. we, I just wanted to say that up front, we're definitely going to be spinning these things, but we should just get into some of these failures. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the, the whole concept here that I, that I want to share today is, uh, is the concept of a failure resume. And I, I, I was listening to a podcast, uh, and the other day, and, and I'll, I'll put it in the show notes, it's called, it's called without fail. And this, this woman who her name escapes me, of course, at the moment, she was talking about how, uh, and she's a Hollywood producer and she's saying, well, I keep this, my failure resume because I always, uh, rebound from failures to some of my biggest successes. And that really hit me. And I said, Oh, that that's really good. You know? Uh, and, and so, you know, we just, we always talk about the power of optimism, creating your own story, embracing the power of yes, all this really positive stuff, which I am, am a firm believer creates a system that helps you to be successful. Yeah. But you know, that point you just brought up that some of your, this woman said some of her biggest successes come right after failures, man. Like I've never thought about that until this moment. Yeah. And my mind's a yeah. little bit blown because that is a hundred percent true for me. I've yep. had, you know, and the bigger the failure or at least the greater I perceive that failure to have been, which is really the only important thing I, in the, in the process. But other people might think, oh, dude, like it's not that big of a deal. Just, you know, you'll figure it out, it, you know, but if I perceive it to be a big failure and then I navigate my way out of it, my biggest successes come from, come right after that. Yeah, it's interesting. It, that phrase that she said really got me thinking. And I and so I, I researched, I started reading about this this concept of a failure resume. Uh, and it was originally, at least it's it's credited to uh, this uh, professor at Princeton, this guy, Johann Hoschefer. Hush, I'm not I'm sure I'm just butchering that, but we'll put a link in there too. And, and his concept was that... Um, we're really shortchanging ourselves if we don't uh, focus a bit, at least on our failures. And number one, it's because it's a way to celebrate our perseverance. Right. Right. And and our ability to recover. And it also introduces a bit of humbleness, you know, when we're thinking about our success, which we which we just kind of mentioned. We're talking about that. Although and, we've avoided mentioning any failures yet. Well, so we're going to get I'm, deep. I'm just pointing. I'm just pointing that out that we're yes, really yes, doing a good yeah, job avoiding yeah, this. I'm not going to fail at the show. I'm going to make it work. <laughs> um, but one of the things I as a as a, a co-host on this show where, you know, we connect with thousands of small business owners I think we've sh we we've talked about mistakes, right? That you and I yeah. make, and we talk. We ask every guest about their best mistake, but on the outside, for successful uh, people, you can often um, it can often look like it, it's a kind of a constant streamlined series of triumphs, right? Yeah, and that's not true. That's not the way it works. And no, it's so messy. Yes, it's it's very ugly on the inside. Yeah, what was and, it? Steve Jobs always said, you know, you can only connect the dots when looking backwards. Looking forward, yeah. it's just a mess. But, you yeah. know, yeah. or when you're in it, right. especially, it's a mess. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I I went ahead and I wrote I wrote a I created my failure resume and I posted it up on my uh, my personal website at channandgene dot com and I'm, I'll link it in the show notes just so I can have it up there. And yeah. and it's you know the funny thing is after. Even just a few minutes before we started recording today, I'm like, oh, I left this out. Oh, yeah. I left that out. I left out. One of the things I left out is how we, uh, which was a failure, how, how we uh, almost sold. So that's on mine. Uh, Deal Brothers. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's I'll, on yours. Yeah. I'll tell that story. Yeah. In fact, I have a, I have a perspective on that that I don't think I've ever shared with you. I don't oh. know that I've ever shared with anyone. So yeah, I have one too. So I would love to hear yours and then I can share mine. How okay. I'm thinking yeah. about it, how I think I could have uh, made that a better experience. You want to start with that one? <laughs> uh, I do want to start with that one. Yeah. But you know what I want to do is yes. uh, I, I, because we've been uh, failing to discuss our failures very successfully here. I will, I, I might uh, add, like nice. we are I doing like a that. fantastic yes. job of <laughs> avoiding this while still making the content at least compelling, if not valuable. Hopefully. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I want to take a minute and talk about our sponsor, which is Linode. 
at linode.com slash SBS, where promo code SBS2019 gets you a $20 credit at Linode for whatever kind of server you need. And this is the thing about Linode. Their cloud-based servers all use SSD storage, just like all your new laptops and even your new desktops use, the way faster disks than we used to have. And as you probably noticed, whenever you made that migration on your own computers, that made a remarkable change in the speed at which your computer operates. Even if the CPU didn't get faster, just having the faster disk makes a huge difference. All of Linode's servers, even the ones that start at $5 a month, all of them use SSD storage. Plus, they're also on fast, really, you know, 40 gigabit networks. They've got industry leading processors. And what's really cool is you can take these servers that you set up, they're cloud servers, you use their cloud manager. You don't have to ever go to the command line or terminal or anything like that. You can just set them up and they have these templates. So if you want a WordPress site, well, great. You do that. You want to set up a VPN? Great. You want to set up a Minecraft server? Sure. You know, you might have trouble explaining to the IRS why you're writing off your, your expense for a Minecraft server. But here's the cool thing is you can use that $20 credit with promo code SBS2019 and you do whatever you want with it. So go to linode.com slash SBS. Use promo code SBS2019 to get your $20 credit. And our thanks to Linode for sponsoring this episode. All right, man. So, cool. all right, I'll start with Deal Brothers because, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> explain what explain what Deal Brothers was. <laughs> right. So, well, Deal Brothers started life as Deals on the Web. This was, yes. uh, I can say, almost exactly eighteen years ago. You came to me uh, yep. and had this idea. You were advertising on some of our websites. That's how we knew each other. You came to me and said, uh, "Hey." I want to create a deals website and you needed a, essentially a technical partner. Uh, yeah. To, right. Yeah. It, you had this idea, you knew what you wanted to do. You, you know, it was all going to be based on affiliate revenue. So we would post links every day and direct people to different sites for deals. And what then they would, great business. it was great <laughs> business. It really, yeah. like it paid it really for a lot was. of things for us for a while. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and you needed a tech partner. So, so we started it great and it went really well. Um, loved it. Like I have no regrets except maybe, maybe one, but I like, I can't really say that, but yeah. I, I, one day the CEO of a public company showed up and said they wanted to buy us. <laughs> they did. It, that's did. literally what happened. Like we were not thinking about selling it. We were just crunching along. Things were going pretty well. Um, yes. And yeah, we'd had some struggles. We made some mistakes where we linked with the wrong people and we had some, some of our affiliate accounts were shut off for a little while and we turned it back on, but they like, you know, that's normal, right? You run a business, things happen. So the CEO shows up and it was for, and it was weird. Cause it was like, you know, a two line email or something with no signature or whatever, but it turned out to be very, very legit. And so we started down the path of negotiating um, for the site. Do you mind if I share the numbers with people? I don't think. Oh, care, okay. Right? Okay. Yeah, it was just because yeah, yeah, yeah. it didn't listen. All the numbers we share, uh, it doesn't matter. It didn't sell. Okay, <laughs> that's right. Great. So uh, it's worth a lot less than these numbers now. But he yeah. came in. He offered us 150 grand for it. And we were we looked at the numbers. We're like, well, why would we sell it if all we're going to get is 150 grand? Like we're we're making yeah. more than that in a year profit. You know, like okay, yeah. great. Uh, it doesn't make that anymore, folks. So you know, sorry. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, affiliate but it was marketing. Different. Yeah, affiliate marketing days are very different now. They're different. Yeah, I think you, some people yeah. are still making money, but it's yeah, not quite so. as easy as it was in the uh, in, yeah. in the heyday. But um, so we went back and we looked. You know, we took a long, hard look like, OK, what would it take for us to be OK selling this? And we decided it was 500 grand. And, you know, we thought, well, OK, is it like what's this guy going to do? Is he going to walk away? You know, and and we went you and I went back and forth. Like, are we OK if he walks away? You know, at five, would we have taken four? Would we have taken three? And the answer was no. Like, we think five's it. OK, so yeah. we go back and he comes back within like, I don't know, two hours or something. And he's like, uh, and we had talked to him on the phone and stuff you know, this conversation sort of happened via email and also on the phone. And actually I wound up meeting, wound up meeting with him and his attorney uh, That's right. at I one point. That. Yep. But I, it, because 
he was relatively local to me. I could drive and meet with him down in New York. Uh, I took the lead on on just interfacing with him, although via email, we were both right there. And yep. uh, and so he came back and, and said, OK, we'll do 500 grand. And it was great. And then we got greedy. <laughs> And you, you call me and you're like, I think we should ask him for six. And, <laughs> and my, my head. I thought, I thought we'd, I thought we'd offered and I, and I may certainly am trying, glazing sure. over it, but I had thought we wanted more. And then he came back at five and no. I thought we were, okay. we told him five and he said uh, five. We said, well, what we I said think. was at least five. I think, yeah, because I don't correct. think I would have gone back if we had put a number out and he agreed to it. I wouldn't have wanted to go back and raise that number. Yeah, but, I think but that is I think what, you're right. But that yeah. is what happened is we said yeah. to him, we, yeah. we would need at least 500 grand. And of course, you know, yeah. he's not going to say, oh, I'll give you 750. Uh, yes. He came back and said, I will go to 500,000. And that's yeah. all his email said was like, yeah. you know, it was those four words or something. And, uh, and then you and I talked and you're like, I think we should ask him for six. And this is one of those things <laughs> in, in my life when my gut tells me things, I need to listen to it. But yeah. intellectually, I agreed with you. You were like, well, we didn't say that we would take five. Yeah, we said we, we right. needed at least five. And I'm like, First time I'd ever negotiated trying to sell a company. By yeah, way. same. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and so my but my gut was screaming at me that day, it, it, like to the point where I, I viscerally remember this. And uh, I was like, OK. And I, I sent him I, like we were in agreement, except my yeah. gut. Like it was our heads were fine. We were totally in lockstep. It was just my gut that was screaming in the corner. And uh, and so we sent the email, you know, well, I actually we need 600. And he like he got pissed. And yeah. it was another short, terse email, you know, but that was again, I set it up this way because that was normal. But it was I don't do business this way, you know, yeah. and that was it. Either I'm take like, it or that's it. And, and I, yeah, I, I think it was a take it or leave. I think he did say yeah. take it or leave it. I think you're totally think right so about too. that. Yep. yep. And so I called him on the phone and, and, you know, worked it out. I'm like, I'm really sorry, you know, confusion and, and yada, yada. Yeah, we were young. You know, yeah, yeah, tail yeah, between yeah. our legs. It was our right, first time right. doing this, yada, yada. And, and he was like, that's okay. You know, we'll, we'll do five. And I'm like, okay, great. And I don't, I, I, to this day, I haven't asked him. I should ask him. He might not remember because he does a zillion deals all the time, but um, I do keep in touch with him from time to time. But I wonder if it was at that point that he decided those guys pissed me off. I'm not going to do this deal with them. I don't know. Hard to say. It's hard, hard to I think say. It, yeah. If, if my take on it, uh, it was or is that his team wasn't really behind it. Uh, he was. He but, was. That's true. Yeah. And the, his team around him wanted to buy a different property. Well, that that uh, is what happened, which, which he, they did. Yeah, correct. they they wound up buying a, a yeah. different property, not in the same business, although I have nope. a I have an aside yep. to share after this. Uh, uh, that's good. Yeah. Not in the but same I, business, but, but yeah, they needed uh, 20 million to do that. Yeah, that's and, right. And uh, so they so we didn't like he was like, we don't have enough money. Like, but there was a 21 day well, due diligence here, period. Here's my failure. OK, go ahead. Is, yeah. Is that I pretty much. OK, the deal is going to happen and yes. uh, I could take my eye off the ball and do something else because this thing is going through. And and the 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 message here is, you know, oh, no news is good news. That's false. Uh, and finally, when we asked on the 21st or 20th day of the 21 day due diligence, yep, that's when he said, oh, we decided to go in another direction. And I believe had we, uh, speaking for myself, because yes. like, like you said, you kind of took the lead on it. Had we been more upfront and uh, regularly communicating, what else can we get you? What other kind of documents? How's everything going? It m may have had a different out outcome. I don't know. Well, but I you know, that other that, deal uh, showed up for them at like day 15 of our 21. Like, I, I don't uh, even I think yeah. it was it was in. I mean, you don't. It, it's again, it's impossible to know. Yes, but, correct. but I think if we had pushed that through on day five or seven, of the 21 day do like we had put a whole, I went and met with them. We, they, you know, we negotiated some points that they, they wanted yeah. some non-compete stuff. And I'm like, dude, no, we had lunch together. Um, a, a, a great lesson I learned there. Yes. I bought that guy lunch. It was just him and his attorney and we all had salads. I mean, it, I don't think it cost yeah. us 50 bucks. Uh, 
when the check came, I grabbed the check. And, yeah, and he smart. was like, oh, no, 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 let me get this. And I'm like, no, you're our customer. I said, quite yeah. literally, you're our customer. We are selling a business to you. And he's like, oh, OK, thanks. He says, I, nobody ever buys me lunch. He says, I honestly can't yeah, remember the last really time. Megan, right. millionaire, multimillionaire exactly. guy. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's so good. always buy, buy somebody move. lunch. It's, I mean, it, it didn't cost anything, although it didn't help. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I well, think but if we know, had, if we had pushed it through, it might have happened. Time kills all deals. I have that yes. written on a sticky that sits true. on my desk and it is 100 percent because of exactly what you just described. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's a really good one. And, and I think that uh, looking back on it, it allows you to have a different perspective or things you might have missed. And so, again, it's another uh, uh, great, you know message of looking at these failures that we often can overlook uh, is, is a helpful thing to do. You know, um, well, I, I will say, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, we both learned the lesson from that, that yes. once you emotionally check out from a business, yeah. it's, we found it impossible to re-engage. I mean, you can we go did. visit the website right now and see when the last time we posted it something is. was, this was it something that to at least three people was worth 500 grand and yeah. now is, you know, arguably worth, you know, somewhere close to zero, yes. uh, you know, and it was because we could not reengage with it with the same yeah, passion. It sucked that we all, had. The, all yeah. the life out of us. <laughs> and, and you learned about val- you've employed a valuable lesson that we learned there. And that was when you sold another business, you put a plan B in. To make oh, yeah. a self-financed plan B or something. I don't remember what yeah, the detail yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that case, it was. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, something to ensure that the deal happened, even if, you know, the plan A fell through. Well, it's it's always looking for uh, what if this happens, what do we do? And yeah. uh, back when I was a much less experienced business person, when that happened, you know, 18 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever it is. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm trying to think. I, oh, it was, um, I know when it was. Because it was about 18 years because my kids were just starting to go into, I think, first grade, my daughter. Was, well, we, when we, we started the business, oh, we started, we yeah, started yeah, yeah. it 18 years ago because my our, yeah. our sons were about to be born, I think. Um, yeah, or right. mine, mine was. But we the the deal was 12 years ago that that yeah. it died. Yeah. 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 yeah, But that's yeah, it seems, it seems longer. I know. Different, different lifetime. It, it, um, it is, I know. Yeah. yeah. But like one of my favorite quotes, you know, from Nelson Mandela is, is that I never lose. I either win or learn. Right. And like you said, th- this is the part I had a, a hard time with when I wrote my failure resume was that I wanted to talk about the lesson and the power of everything I had learned during, uh, you know, when those things happened. And, yeah. and I, I, I held myself back from doing that, but I, I always put, you know, and I put it down at the bottom. And if you go and read it, you can see where I made, you know, made some comments, but I often uh, consider these lessons as tuition, right? Yeah. And I learn, I, I have a ton of things that I I refuse to call failures because I was like, wow, I really, I really learned a lot and I picked up and I would not have been able to know if I had not taken that leap and not tried, you know, this, this product or this project. So a lot of what I, what other people may consider failures, I didn't add on my list, but I do know I have, I mean, there are one, two, three, four, five, six company failures on my failure resume. Yeah. And I'm not going to go over all of them. I'll tell you, you know, but, I was going to say we should, it, we, we did say that we would talk about our failures. Yes. So we yes. should talk yes. about maybe one each, uh, you know, and, and yep. pick your yep. favorite. I'm, I, uh, you want to go first? You want me to go first? doesn't matter. Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. Go ahead. I, I was, when I was still in college and I was running a, a construction business and I was buying, I was renting all kinds of equipment and, you know, it was very expensive to rent big, you know, tractors and yeah. know, cranes to move stuff around. And of course, thinking the way I do, it's like, gosh, you know, it's got to be a way I can just buy this stuff for, for almost what it's costing to rent and figured out a way to do that. Go to some auctions, find, buy some used equipment, use them for these projects and then resell them. Right. And try to at least get my money out of it. Right. And so, so I would get to the use of it for quote, you know, for free. And 
after a while, what I realized is that, oh, you know, there's just money in buying this product, moving it around the country to different, uh, uh, you know, areas. Like if, if Atlanta was booming, if the construction industry was hot there, oh, but it was yeah. bad in Southern California, well, I could go to Southern California and buy cranes and, you know, you name it, yeah, right. <laughs> you name it, we bought it. And then I would ship it to another part of the country and, uh, and sell it. And the great, I've always operated in inefficiencies, right? And it was horribly inefficient because there was no internet like, like there is now. You, you couldn't find all the stuff you can find now, or it was much more difficult. Um, but the mistake I made, so I took an investment from my parents. They were my angel investors, right? Sure. So they invested about $10,000. And the mistake I made was I kind of forgot that I, I would have to live while I was doing this. And I forgot the, about like expenses and, you know, I had to eat, right? I had to right. pay rent. I had to ship all this stuff and it was not nearly enough money. And uh, I wound up burning through all this, this cash, even after selling, you know, equipment and I was just out of cash. I had no more money left. And I, I thought, I was like, I have just, you know, made the, this is my business career is over <laughs> before it started. Right. Yeah. And, and it was actually, you know, my mom that sat me back down and go, well, let me show you what happened. Cause I had to go back and say, you know, I lost the money. I lost the money. Right. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a uh, tail between I, your legs conversation. Yeah. yeah. I lost the money. She's like, well, don't worry. Cause I'm going to have you take on this project and you're going to make, make that money back for me. But let me show you why you lost it because you did this and you did that and you didn't keep track of this. And that probably wasn't enough money to get started anyway and all that kind of stuff. So it, it, it was a big failure. Um, you know, the one upside, I got to drive a 40 ton crane from, you know, San Francisco Bay area all, all the way down almost to Mexico. And that, that was a lot of fun. Uh, and that was my, you know, the upside that I remember from that, that project, but yeah, but it was, yeah. it was good. Um, and I, I've, you know, I, I I just come back to it's kind of the opposite. We talk about this success list, right? Yeah, we, we a lot. Well, this is just the opposite. But I'm starting to think that this might be more powerful um, because it just reminds me, oh, I I can get through this stuff because I face it all the time. I'm I'm in a, a kind of a reinvention phase in my life right now, and I've got some businesses doing well and other ones that are just they just suck, yeah. you know? And, yeah. and I was like, gosh, you know, do I have to cut these loose? So what do I do? And, and I'm not getting any younger and I'm thinking, God, you know, can I reinvent myself again, over and over again? Yeah. And, and I got, you know, one more kid to get through college. And, you know, unfortunately I live in the most expensive place on earth out here in the Bay area in California. Yeah. And Apple's not going to uh, probably not going to buy you a house either. No, so, they're not going to no. do that. And, no. and so I'm constantly questioning myself. And I think that, uh, Focusing on failure more and reminding ourselves about it, um, you know, whether it's product launch failures, uh, you know, whatever, but being more, maybe more authentic and transparent about it would help myself more as well as other people that are listening in um, that are maybe going through the same struggle yeah. you know, or similar, similar. Struggle. Yeah. So, so, so I'm, I'm happy to, I'm happy to do it. And, uh, you know, Harvard Business View Review has a great article up there about it, and I'll, I'll link it in the show cool. notes. Um, you know, and and I would just say don't don't ignore the setbacks. It you know because it it just it leads to this false perception, and when then when you do get a setback, you kind of you know tear into yourself, which uh, is not helpful either. Right, right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's good stuff. You have another one you want to share? Sure. Um, I, and it's one that I had forgotten about until like I, I built a list. I, there's, there were four things on my list. Uh, many of them have to do with not choosing my business partners correctly. <laughs> uh, I don't mean to laugh, but I, that's yeah. never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's okay. Uh, but yeah, um, it, yeah it, it, and, and, I, I mean, and thankfully, you know, the, the present company excluded, uh, which is great. <laughs> yeah. But um, I had this one and I had completely forgotten about it, but I remembered the success that came after it. And as we were doing the episode, I'm like, wait a minute, there was, you know, I'm trying to think of like, well, we've, you know, you have kind of bursts of success here and there. It's sort of how things at least go for me. And then, you know, you sort of get an autopilot. Then maybe you get on, you know, dangerous autopilot and then you fix it and things get better. And I was trying to remember what predicated this. And it was like, oh, right. Black chop. So I, I got 
you, you people know me like Shannon, you came to me because you, you knew me from other business and publishing Mac observer means that there's people that know me that I'm not actually doing business with. Right. You know yeah. it that. And so I've had several partnerships that, that started or almost started because of, you know, somebody saying, Oh, you would be a good person. Um, of course. <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, so these guys came to me and they're like, Hey, look, you know, they they were Apple fans and they were stock traders. And they said, we've been working on an automated, you know, trading algorithm uh, that would, that essentially traded Apple uh, options. And you know, they're like, we've back tested it. It's pretty amazing. We just, we need a tech partner to pull all this together. And then we're going to essentially form a very small, um, uh, you, you know, uh, boutique fund that, that okay. is just for this one thing, which is like, okay, oh, fine. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and so it's like, okay, you know, so I, I put, you know, some time into this, we had to set up servers that would run this trading algorithm on a platform that, uh, you know, that, that's built to do this, this automated trading and it has the software and we, you know, we tweak the, or they tweak this algorithm, but I didn't know these guys, you know, it was just, it sounded good. And, and there's a sounded too good to be true lesson here. I don't think they had any bad intent. I really don't, but I, I also don't think they knew what they were doing. And I, 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 they, they knew less about what they were doing than I thought they did. Um, but I don't think they misrepresented themselves. I think it was me misinterpreting things um, and, and just seeing past any flaws because it was like, oh, this actually sounds like a pretty easy thing. If I get, get involved, they do these things. Uh, there could be some money on the table, you know, with the sure. profits from this, uh, from this automated trading thing. Well, and, and then I chose to put some money into it and be not only a partner in the business, uh, uh, you know, in the management of the business, but also a partner in this fund. We got, I don't know, I think we got 20 people to each put in 10 or 15 grand or something. And then it was like, okay, we'll let the engine run with whatever it is, you know, 250 grand or whatever we had. And, you know, okay. let's, let's see what we can, let's see what we can make it do, you know, and it crashed and burned. I mean, it, we basically lost everybody's money, um, you know, except, except for like a pittance here and there. And, and that sucked, you know, to lose whatever, like you said, you know, 10 or 15 grand. And it was at a time when the kids were younger and I was like, wow, that was actually a lot of money to lose. You know, it, yeah. it really hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was it was not it. Yes, I chose the wrong business to get involved in, but it was I didn't vet my partners enough. And to like, what else have you done? What what is I know you came to me because you see at least a face of success from me with with, you know, Mac Observer and, and that sort of thing. But they didn't ask like what I actually like. I might just be able to put on a good face, you know. <laughs> like yeah, they should have dug right. in a little deeper, you know. But they didn't, and nor did I. And that was really the lesson. It was like, okay, who are these guys? Have they had a track record with this sort of thing before? Why? Why am I getting into business with these people? Is their idea really that good? And if so, how come nobody else has done it? You know that that sure. kind of yeah. thing uh, was was the lesson there, and it was you know. It was fine. It was, you know, lost some money and then that's that. And, you yeah, know, there you go. So and lost yeah. some time and, and time is the biggest thing. I think it, that's the right. killer. Yeah. yeah. But it, but again, it, it, it pissed me off right at the time. It was like, crap. And, oh, and I got my father-in-law to invest too. So oh, he had like 10 rough. grand in it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, it's always tough. I, he knew going yeah, in that's that, good. He, that's that, good. That he could lose it all. And, yep. um, and, and he was fine. Actually, he got more out than anybody else. Because oh. he he pressured those guys to get some to get the cash out of them and and succeeded, um, you, you know. Just I mean, not 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 like you know with with like the, you know it was all legal pressure. It wasn't, yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't anything sure. like, like shady or anything like Break that. Break your legs? No, there <laughs> yeah. was none of that. No, yeah, no, no. no. He just good. yeah, he just has friends in all the right places, and he was like, you don't like you, you want to you want to honor my request to get my money out right now, and they were like, yeah, actually, you're totally right. Yeah, we don't we don't nice. need any legal troubles. Yeah. And yes. uh, so, he, but he lost some, but I don't think he lost yeah. all of it. Yeah. But, um, but still like that's egg on my face. Right. You know, with, yeah, with my, happens, not, right. the, like with my father-in-law, I don't, I don't know if that's better or worse than my parents. Probably worse. It's hard to, yeah. I don't know. For yeah, me, I would I think say that might worse. be, it might be yeah. worse. Yeah. I would be, I mean, that, that scares the heck out of me to take other people's money. And I have had it offered mm -hmm. to me time and time again. And I'm just like, you know, 
I really just, you know, I value your friendship or whatever, That's you know, thing. just too much. I just can't do it because things go south all the time. I mean, that, that more often Most than not. Most businesses go south. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And, and so if it's just my money and my time, I can then, you know, chalk it up to tuition. <laughs> right. Yes. And, yes. you know, and I just yeah. had a big failure. You know, I had a company that I started, you know, and worked for a year with the guy. Talk about, you know, we're, we were talking about partners and how to pick good partners. I wrote that down to do an episode on that. Yeah. Coming up. yeah. Uh, and, but the only person that I, I, it really hurt was me. Right. Yeah. Financially and time. Time is, and, and probably because I'm getting a little older now that, that I don't think, you know, I've got all the time in the world. So I'm, time for me is, is, a. Uh, is always more challenging. Yep. And uh, it's like, wow, it burned almost a year on this project. I got some other stuff out of it, some ancillary things that I can use to hit, regenerate that revenue that, um, the last, that, I, that I invested. The last failure that I had, which we haven't talked about, well, we've talked about it on the show, but not in this show, but that the time that I lost on that one was the thing that, that really, yeah. really upset me the most. And, but it was, it fueled me. I mean, it like, you know, I came out of it with a vengeance. It was like, all right, cool. All the mental energy and time that I lost and spent on that thing. I've still got that every day. So yeah. I can apply yeah. that in the in the smartest way possible. And I did. And it, you know, and it yeah. was like, OK, yeah. cool. Got out of that yeah. hole. Yep. Good. That's good. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, the, the, the last thing for me on uh, as I was writing this stuff is I noticed on a couple of failures, there was some commonality and. One of those uh, that are two businesses that failed, I believe now I can trace back to poor timing that oh. I om almost like a retail stock buyer, right? Uh, like me yeah. who buys stock just, oh, that, that looks like a good stock. Netflix is going up. I, I get, I got information about it. I learned about a market, but I entered it too late. Right. And it's because I didn't have the insight to know what was going on or what was going to happen, you know, a year earlier. Right. I wasn't in the industry. Uh, I was, uh, you know, shiny object. We should get involved in this type yeah, it's of like thing. My, that's like my and, black job thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Same kind of thing. Yeah. And so two of, uh, you know, significant failures that cost me, a, you know, good chunk of money, six figures each are based on that bad timing. Yeah. And so uh, I haven't done it again. But I've learned that uh, or just just by writing it down like that, and I never really thought about it because I didn't see those things next to each other. So, you know, so uh, go write a failure resume and then share the results with us here. You know, send it to, to uh, you know, give us some feedback at businessshow.co. We want to hear from you. We want to celebrate your success and your ability to recover from failure. Right. Because that's what that failure resume is going to do for you. Um and I think it helps connect you with people even maybe a little closer because they realize you're fallible and, uh, you know, you're not always a rock star. No, 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 not a, yeah. like that. You know, pre-show in a very different context, we were talking about how people, none of us knows what it takes for any of the rest of us to get through our day. Right. You, you see our highlight reel. We talk about it here. Like, you know, yeah, we talk about our failures. But I mean, to be fair, we've turned every one of these stories into a success just <laughs> by nature of talking about it. Yeah. So yeah. but, you know, you, you don't know what it takes to get somebody through their day. And it it's like, yeah, it, everybody is failing all the time is the reality. And, and then yep. you just have to you just have to have good successes. That's all. You know, it's yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And but then yeah, you, it means experimenting. It means trying. Yeah, it is an experiment. It's trying. It's and, and I would say that that's where the majority of people get stuck is it's they true. don't want to see, talk about the failure. They don't want to take that risk. And so uh, I, you know, cheers to you if you have a failure resume to create, because that's part of your success. Mm. Yeah. Cheers indeed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Because you tried. Yeah. 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 Got it. That's it. You're not going to, you're not going to change anything if you don't try. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Just like we're changing the format of the show here a little bit. You know, we'd love to hear what you think. We'd have also love to get a review. Uh, if you go to businessshow.co slash review, you can click right through and leave us a review. Let us know what you think of the show. We definitely want your input. Yeah, for sure. For sure. 
All right. Well, I think that wraps us up for the day. Thanks for listening, folks. You know where to find us. Thanks to linode.com slash SBS, our sponsor. Keep living that charmed life, which includes failing sometimes. 